Uh, it looks like the next couple of days, PG&E is anticipating some more power shutoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, as of recently, uh, we've been hearing about various cities that are thinking of moving away from PG&E. Um, not necessarily just because of the power shutoffs, but for other reasons. Um, I understand Rockland could be one of those cities. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, this has been a big trend that you've seen statewide, I think, as a result of the power shutoffs. Rockland was sort of on the forefront of that because we actually had a proposal to um, consider alternatives before the shutoffs. And the impetus of that was the high electricity rates of PG&E when compared to our neighbors, uh, Roseville Electric right next door, you know, and so when a business is looking to relocate or where they're gonna do, where residents are gonna live, you know, electric rates, especially for big businesses, come into account there. So, so yeah, like I was saying is we, we have this proposal and we didn't have enough uh, support on the majority of the council to move that forward to consider other alternatives. Um, but I think with the shutdowns now, it, I think more residents are reaching out to council members and saying, hey, you should at least consider other options. Interesting. Now, how likely do you think it is that you guys will indeed be able to move forward? with this proposal? Well, it's such a long process. I mean, the infrastructure is owned by PG&E. So there's negotiations and all sorts of things. But the very first step is doing a um, an analysis on whether there's even a, a possibility of this happening. Um, so we would have to go do a study, find out how much the equipment is worth and the infrastructure is worth, and then whether or not that that's actually something feasible for Rockland to do. So these are very beginning stages for Rockland, um, but again, it hasn't even passed the city council yet, so it's something we have to get through the council in order to move forward. I see, so obviously it can be an extensive process until you know this it, comes to fruition. Yeah, yeah i mean this is a very long process and as you've seen with other cities including here in the sacramento region um, like in yellow county i mean that was a multi-year process and so we would only want to do something like that here in rockland if it makes sense for our residents and businesses um, to even consider it if it doesn't make sense we wouldn't move forward um you know this was a, a decision that or a proposal that was kind of coming into the works prior to mm -hmm. the power shutoffs, but with the power shutoffs, it's kind of, um, I guess, added fuel to the uh, proposal of, of getting it switched, correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the um, like, as I mentioned, the proposal was before um, uh, the power shutoffs, mostly because of high uh, electricity rates and things like that. But with the shutoffs, more residents and businesses are becoming concerned about um, you know, the reliability of power. So here in Rockland, for me personally, it's elevated the discussion to say, hey, look, we need to look at this and see if we can, if there are alternatives out there to provide more reliable power. So the grid's very complex statewide. I don't understand it. I don't have all the answers, which is why my proposal is simply to just investigate what the options are, and then so we can make an educated decision. Yeah, that was actually my next question. So if there are other alternatives, what would those alternatives be at this time to pg and &E? Or that's what the investigation is going to... Yeah. Well, one thing I've been thinking a lot about is that there is a lot of money in utility business. And just recently, uh, PG&E had a settlement with Napa County for $11 billion because of the wildfires that occurred over there. Imagine if we spent that $11 billion on innovation and creating a more reliable grid. And so I think about the opportunities that are there for people to come in, engineers, and innovate the grid and be more helpful. So whether or not Rockland moves forward on its own uh, power uh, source, is it possible to innovate our grid statewide uh, with funds that are coming in? Interesting. Um, now just real quick, just to kind of talk about the power shutoff for mm -hmm. tomorrow and Thursday. I know there's kind of a, a preliminary map that's been kind of released out there mm -hmm. with certain areas. Um, it doesn't look like Rockland would be affected in it. Um, I guess I don't, I can't say that with 100% certainty at this time. Uh, what have you guys been doing to, I guess, anticipate and prepare for it in the event? Yeah. Yeah, power shutoffs require an enormous uh, level of preparation by local governments. Uh, one example would be the schools. Something simple like keeping the food 
warm or cold for students, tens of thousands of students, you know, just in Rockland who eat school food every day. So, um, you know, another thing is obviously traffic signals. Uh, we use traffic signals every day. Well, most cities, um, the traffic signals will only stay up for uh, several hours after a power shutoff. So what happens if it exceeds eight hours, the traffic signals go off. And so all that preparation, notifying people what's going to happen, how to stay safe, you know, that's been top priority for us. Good deal. So, you know, with that being said, I mean, obviously districts for the most part have plans in place or backup plans in the event that something happens. Um, traffic lights, as you said, is always an interesting thing. When we were out covering it two weeks ago, we saw just the backup mm -hmm. of traffic. And so there's a lot of things that obviously we rely on every day that we don't know. Um, you, you know, I, like I said, it doesn't look like Rockland will be in it, but um, I guess with that being said, uh, is there anything else that you would want your residents or the people of Rockland to know um, within the next 48 hours, if it is like, you know, uh, to reassure them that things will be okay and, you know, business will go on as usual? Well, here in Rockland, I mean, in probably every city, the police departments, fire departments, we're going to be there to assist if there's an emergency. Um, city services are still going to be functioning. Um, I think what's really important for residents to go out and make sure you have your batteries, have your water, have some food just in case you're not able to, uh, to keep that cold for several days. Yeah, I think, I think the state needs to really put together a system for local jurisdictions and cities on how exactly these notifications work, how you can prepare. So every time one of these happens, we're not recreating the wheel and becoming more and more uh, concerned about how we're going to protect people. I mean, if this is happening several times a year, how exactly do we replicate this? And this is happening statewide in many cities throughout the region. And so it's not really a Rockland issue. It's a statewide issue that needs to be addressed this coming year.